Good morning, modern steaders. We gotta get up to the off-grid property today and see how the water is flowing up at our water system that we put in. We got the tank buried the other day. It was a long day and by the time we got that all done, I didn't have a chance to try the hydrants and get all the water flushed out and get them running. So we gotta get up there today, try that out, see how it's going. But first we gotta take care of all of our animals, feed our meat birds. I finally had to fill up, there was a hole right there. I finally had to fill up my IBC tote the other day with water. We used one 275 gallon tote of water so far for our first batch of meat birds and our second batch of meat birds. And this time I moved it before it was up there. I moved it closer to the tractors now. So this way I'll have less walking to do when I'm filling up the water again. And I'll tell you what, having this IBC tote out in the field like this to fill up our chickens water is saving a lot of time. So if you guys are raising meat birds out on a pasture away from your hose, if you can get an IBC tote or some kind of water source on a wagon to move it around, it's gonna be a time saver for you. And it makes it so much more convenient. I'm curious to know, do you raise your own meat birds for food? If not meat birds, or, meat, or if you do raise meat birds, what other animals are you raising for your own food this year? We're up here at the off-grid property and when I was driving by the brook the other night coming out, I noticed there is a bunch of fresh brush being cut down by the beavers. There's some there and some there. So we do know the beavers are back. We're gonna have to find them and take care of them because we can't have them flooding this back out. So that's gonna be on our to-do list again. Luckily so far the water level is still nice and low. So it doesn't look like 
they have a dam built or if they do, it's not a very big dam yet. If you're just tuning into the series, we've been working on making a gravity fed off grid water system here up at the property. And we first originally tried burying an IBC tote. Don't do that. It doesn't work. <laughs> the IBC tote collapsed on itself before it was completely buried. So we bought a new container that is food grade safe or it's good for rainwater collection and it's made to be buried. We buried that in our last video. So if you want to see how that went, you can go back to our older video and watch that. And we buried it up there. We got the overflow coming out. We'll go up there in a minute, but we haven't checked out the hydrants yet. By the time we got done doing all that up there, it was fairly late. So, so we didn't come down here and see how the water's running. We need to do that today. Can I do it? You wanna? Yeah. It looks like it's drying out a little bit. Okay, so I just gotta pull this up. Just pull that up. <laughs> Cold. Cold spring water. It looks like it's clear. Yeah. So I'd say, I don't know how much pressure. A little bit of hose. pressure there. Hose pressure. Well, not like full blast hose. No. So out of this one, we definitely have enough for washing your hands, for running a hose. One of the things we really want this water system for is when we move our homestead up here and we have our animals, we can have running water for our animals and that's more than enough pressure for the animals. Yes, and I will get it tested just to make sure it's safe for the animals. <laughs> yep, part of my eye. All right, let's give this one a try. Uh-oh. I heard it. There we go. Oh. I wonder if we still have air in the line. Let me leave this one running. Because there still could be air in the line or stuff in the line. And that doesn't look like it's running as clear. Right. So, this and this one should be clearer. This one's dirty water. So let's leave this running for a little while and we'll see if we, got any, if we can get any air out. It's got water coming out. That's we got good. water. That's more than enough for watering our animals, so. It'd be nice to have a little bit more pressure. I'm gonna leave this running because there's gotta be air in the system. I'm gonna stop backfilling that trench. So this right here, believe it or not, it's probably the same height, but maybe a little bit higher than that last hydrant. I have a T in right here. Let me shut this off for a minute. I have a T in right here where I can run another line. I might end up digging this back out and going further down because it drops off quite a bit down here and to see if we get more pressure down there. But let's leave this on and we'll see if it gets the air out of the system if we get more pressure in a little bit. Let's see it take a little bit longer for it to start coming out. It does. Oh. I bet there is air. There's got to be something in it. And it's getting steadier. Yep. So my question is to you is, do they make like an inline pump we could put in here? Like would an RV camper pump work? Is there something we can put in the tank that we could do solar so we could have a better pressure stream if this doesn't pick up or not. I know somebody who's watching the video is going to have an answer for that. If you do, leave it in the comments or send us an email with a link or the product you're talking about. My brother's still up with his boys and they're going to be out playing and having fun and Gene is trying to pan for gold with one of them to see if they can find any gold. There's a lot of shimmery stuff in the spring so they're curious to find out if it's fool's gold or if it's gold. That would be nice if it was real gold. Probably not, but you never know. So while they're having fun, I'm gonna be backfilling in this trench and getting this trench filled in. They're calling for more rain, and I wanna get this filled in before we get any more rain in the hole. <laughs>
up here we notice there's some sparkly little gold pieces which are looks like the fool's gold but my mom has this fun pants so we said well let's try it out and see okay. yeah Big rocks on his left.
down here around this first hydrant. It's pretty wet and muddy. This is where I got stuck the last time. So it's filled in the best we can fill it in for now. I can't finish grade it because if I do, I'm just gonna make a mess and I'm gonna end up getting stuck. So now I wanna stop pushing my grade up to the container where we have it buried. And I didn't, I should have worked my way down and then up. So my extra dirt would have been up there, but I was afraid if I did that, I'd stop pushing all that water up and we'd be working with a muddy, muddy mess the whole way. So I worked up and worked my way down. Now my extra dirt, I gotta push back up. You think the flow got any better? I don't know if the flow is any better. No. Nope. Bummer. It's clear. It's clear. It's cold, making our pipe condensate. So we have good cold water. Not high flow by any means, but. Let me go grab my five gallon bucket and let's see how many gallons a minute we're getting or how long it takes to fill up a five gallon bucket. All right, we'll put our bucket right here. Wait a minute. You're supposed to be able to hang a bucket off your hydrant. That one doesn't work. Let's go to the other hydrant. So this one is a Campbell. That's the more expensive one. The other one we got from Tractor Supply was like half the price. I'm pretty sure you can hang your bucket on that one. So let's go fill up over there. 
No reason why I didn't get two of them from Tractor Supply is each store around here only had one. So I'm glad I didn't get two of these. And then the next hydrants we get, I'll definitely make sure I have a way to hang my bucket. Yeah, all right, let's go to this one. That one's got a place to hang your bucket without it falling. All right, I'm gonna get my stopwatch going. All right, so let me turn this on. When water starts running, start. My guess is it's gonna take about two and a half minutes. 30 seconds in and we're about this high. So I'm gonna say two and a half minutes to get five gallons. Is that good or bad? I don't know. A lot of people's wells only get a gallon a minute. Uh, a lot of people's wells only get three gallons a minute, so it won't be as much as a well. But for free water that we never have to use electricity for right now. All right, so four minutes, 10 seconds to get five gallons. So we get about a gallon and a quarter in a minute out of here. That's not bad, I don't think. I want to go further down over that drop and see how much more, if I put another hydrant in, how much more water pressure will get down there. It'll be interesting to find out. But that's whew, more than enough to water our animals. Before we give this to our animals to drink, we're gonna send it out to get tested to make sure it's safe for them to drink. And if you guys know of any kind of inline pump to put in here in the tank that we could do solar without pressurizing it, leave it in the comments down below. I'm thinking there's gotta be something. I know like in a camper, they have a valve or a pump. When you turn the valve on or the faucet on, I should say in your sink, it kicks the pump on. I'm just not sure if it's like in line or how it works. If you guys know of something, leave it in the comments down below. It'd be nice to get a little bit more pressure. So if we wanted to hose off the equipment or something like that, we could. Look at these beautiful zucchinis. So excited. They are homegrown, but unfortunately they're not from our garden, but they are from my brother-in-law, sister-in-law's garden. They were nice enough to bring some to us when they came to visit and we were so excited to have them. And I just wanna make sure I use them up before they are no good. They could go to the pigs, but I wanna eat them. Olivia wants to eat them, Al wants to eat them. So I'm basically gonna do a zucchini boat without the zucchini boat. So I'm just gonna chop them up. I have some pork burger over there. Just add some stuff and just have it over rice, and I think it's a be simple, easy, and delicious, great leftovers. So I'm just going to brown up my burger, my pork burger and my onion, get that all cooked up. And then I'm gonna add the zucchini and then I'm gonna add some diced tomatoes and tomato sauce. Don't mind the noise, it's just my brown rice cooking. So that's all cooked up. And then I just drained, it was a little bit, this pork burger hardly has any fat, so I just drained that a little bit. And now I'm gonna add my zucchini, if I don't make a mess here. I got a lot, maybe too much, but we love zucchini. We do have little zucchinis growing in our squash patch, and a couple little, um, couple little summer squash. I've seen some buttercup squash and pumpkin. It seems like they're not growing, but all of a sudden we'll just have a ton. And then I'm going to do some diced tomatoes. If you have fire roasted diced tomatoes, that would probably be even better, but I don't. So 
I'm gonna do one can and see if that's enough. Then I have a can of tomato sauce. We have a ton of tomatoes growing, so I'm hoping to have my own tomato sauce soon. Now we're just gonna turn this back on. I have it out of medium heat, and then I'm just gonna put the cover on and just let it do it saying so that the zucchini and everything cooks together and once the zucchini is tender it'll be ready to eat my rice will be ready It's nice knowing that the gravity fed system works. I don't have all the pressure I was hoping to have, but I have enough to water the animals in the gardens and stuff like that. I'm gonna put one more hydrant in for now, down past the maple trees. It drops off pretty good right there. And I'm hoping the gravity pressure picks up because of that. But um, I know there's gotta be some kind of submersible pump that we could put in there that we could run off of solar. I think they call it like an on-demand pump. I don't wanna to have to have like a pressurized tank. I just wanna be able to turn the water lines on and when the water lines come on, I want some flow moving and just like a little pressure. So I know somebody out there knows that. So if you do, leave me a comment, email me, hook, hit me up somehow. I don't know about you, but it is going to be zucchini time here on the homestead. And there's gonna be a lot of zucchini we're gonna to need to eat. So if you guys got any good recipes, leave them in the comments down below. We're always looking for that. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. I hope your garden is doing well and that you're growing a bunch of delicious food. Thanks for watching and we'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.